how to become a profitable NFT YouTuber. Setting up a channel. Now look, if you can like and comment on videos, you've got a Google account, which then means that you can set up a channel. If you can like and comment, hit up a like on this video. But what you should do is just YouTube, how to set up a channel. I'm gonna skip over this because I wanna get into the good stuff. Your name. Now you can set up a real name or a fake name. Uh, it comes down to your preference. They both have their pros and cons. Um, there is no uh, right or wrong way when it comes down to your name, but the only thing it should be is congruent with who you are and your image, but also any social media accounts that you may have that you may be kind of using to kind of build this audience out. Contact details as links. The idea with the contact details as the links is TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, website, all that kind of stuff, it will pop up up here when it comes down to your channel. It makes people uh, able to follow you easier and also can reduce um, scammers and spammers that are kind of in the comments section because you can always reference those links on your channel later. Your niche. Now, when it comes down to your niche, do you want to be talking about metaverse stuff like NFTverse? Do you want to be doing uh, videos about the upcoming drops that are happening that week or hot projects just like Crypto Gorilla? Or do you want to be doing uh, more analytical stuff like post drop analysis, like the content that I make on this channel? Find your niche, find something that you like to talk about because this helps viewers understand the type of person that you are, but then it also gives you the enthusiasm to actually continue going. If you're making content that you don't like, it's going to be hard, it's going to be a struggle, and then you're going to give up. What gear to use? Now, when it comes down to what gear to use, if you've only got a laptop sort of front facing camera, just use that. You don't need to get something heavy and expensive. The idea is that it's the content quality when it comes down to the NFT space. If you're doing a photography or videography channel, 100% you wanna have high production values. But when it comes down to it, people just want alpha. People wanna know what project's coming up and they just wanna get that information. So if you're clear and concise on getting that information out there, it doesn't matter. For anyone that is wondering, I've got a Canon M50. I've got a 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. I've got a big sort of key light that is a softbox. It's the Godox SL60W. I've then got another backlight that's an RGB hard light that kind of gives me this rim. I've then got two RGB lights here so I can then pump up some uh, sort of color into the background. And then I've also got uh, a little light here that just illuminates the microphone. The idea is that you will build over this over time, but just getting the content out there um, at any cost will actually force you to make better content, which means that when you have the gear, you'll actually produce even better content. It doesn't matter how good your gear is, if you've got bad uh, information in your content or bad values when it comes down to the content that you're producing, people aren't gonna follow you. If you've got absolutely banger alpha and you're a real personable person, it doesn't matter if you look like a potato, they're gonna subscribe because they're gonna like you for you. Your first video. Now, when it comes down to your first video, just put it out there. Don't worry about trying to make it perfect. Don't worry about it being amazing and polished. Just put it out there. No one will really see it, but it'll get you over that hump and will make the second, third, fourth a lot easier to put up. Set a routine. Now, when it comes down to setting a routine, it's how often do you want to kind of upload the content? Do you want to do daily content like NFT Pasta? He does stuff daily. Do you want to be doing uh, a kind of content once a week? That's fine. There is no right and wrong answer. It's what you feel comfortable with. Setting a routine is good because it lets your followers know what they can expect and when they can expect it. And setting up this routine also helps out your subscribers. They know when your content's going to come out and they're more likely to kind of view the video because they know that it's going to be coming out around 4 p.m. Eastern, which means that they can then be ready at 5 or 6 p.m. to watch it when they're ready cooking dinner. Refine your method. Now, what I mean by this is it means I want you to refine your recording and your post-production method. The idea is that having the studio set up, working out how you write your scripts, um, working out how you kind of shoot and edit, refining the process will make it a lot faster and a lot easier. The very first video that I put together took me about three hours in post-production. Now it's a lot faster. I've cut this down to uh, sort of less than an hour. The idea is that over time I've refined the process because I've kept making content, kept changing it up to then make the workflow easier. An example is that I use OBS to record. I know I can get a better piece of content 
by setting up a camera just like this, recording and going picture in picture, and then doing a multi-camera shoot when it comes down to the edit. But the idea is that with OBS, I can have one solid clip and then edit a lot easier that way. And the editing process is a lot faster that way. So by doing that, I speed up my post-production process, which means that I can then make videos faster, better, and it saves more time when it comes down to the uh, mental space to kind of make better content, um, working with people, things like that. Thumbnails. Now, when it comes down to the thumbnail, these are almost the most important thing that comes down to a channel. People only know you exist because they've clicked on a video. They've only clicked on a video because they've seen the thumbnail. What you should do is look at people within the niche, so the NFT space is a good one, see what kind of thumbnails they're putting together and copy those thumbnails. The idea is that those thumbnails are working for a reason. So if you can then emulate those types of thumbnails, the viewers are already familiar with it. So look at the thumbnails that Crypto Gorilla is putting out. Look at the thumbnails that Ryan D Crypto is putting out. Look at the thumbnails that Matt's Crypto is putting out because they're putting out thumbnails that work and that generate clicks. And because they're generating clicks, it means that it's actually working for the algorithm. You can then jack this trend and accelerate that process. When I personally changed my thumbnails over, I saw an increase in viewership and an increase in subscribers because I started to actually work and lean into what was working and not trying to forge my own path. If everyone's doing something, there may be a reason for it, so follow that. Title and description. Now the title and description is super important and I like to think of it in two different ways. You've got highly searched way and the kind of clickbait or curiosity way. The idea is that if you're doing something on Board Ape or a project that's kind of just launched, heavily load the title with those keywords so people understand what it is and it is ranked and searched for easier. The other aspect is the curiosity or the clickbait way, which is the three projects that are gonna blow up or why you need to be on these five whitelists. They have a sense of curiosity and they let the thumbnail do the talking and also get people to consider what they should kind of click in and watch. The idea with working on these really hard in the beginning will set you up better down the line reach out and try collaborations. Now what I'm saying is find people that are within your space at around that same sub level and reach out to them, ask them if they wanna do interviews, ask them if they kind of wanna do collaborations in any ways. The way this works is if you've got a thousand, they've got a thousand and you've got uh, sort of a 500 crossover, the idea is that you can then access their 500, they can access your 500, you both grow. But it shows that you're a friendly person within the space and shows that you're just as well connected as everyone else, which is good for your brand. Don't read the comments. Now this is a bit of a loaded one, a bit of a controversial one, but don't read the comments. Read them in the first sort of 500 to 1000 subs mark, but once you start to get bad comments and hate comments, just stop reading the comments because it will be good for your health if you don't read them. I don't like to read the comments after say the 30 minute or one hour mark because I know that there are people out there that just say terrible things because they've got nothing better to do. And the idea that 99% of the people that are liking the video and actually sort of uh, putting in good quality comments, I want them to get the attention. I wanna make sure that they're actually getting good quality content and good value out of it. And the fact that that bad comment can maybe put you off to not put out that video that you wanna put out that may help someone. They may kind of just stick in the back of your mind and kind of get you down, which means that you don't put out a piece of content and more people are d disappointed. The idea that you should only read the comments when you're kind of in that zone, when you know that people that are kind of uh, subbed and are sort of really hyped on you are commenting, do that. Afterwards, don't read the comments and that might actually help you out because if you're happy, you're gonna make happier content, which means that you're actually gonna make a better channel and you're gonna have more engaged subscribers because they're happy with the content that you're putting out. How fast will you grow? Essentially, you're going to be doubling every month. Now, I'm only gonna kick this on from about 1,000, but in the first month, you go 1,000 to 2,000. The second month, 2004, four to eight, eight to 16. The idea that within that sort of month to month and a half period, you should be doubling your subscribers. Now, this can go faster for people that are putting out more relevant content, but it could also go slower for people that are putting out more niched content. But the idea is that's a good rule of thumb. The first sort of 1,000 subscribers might be a little bit harder Hard because you might sort of kick on and get three or 400 subs, a, a big boost on one kind of video, and that'll kind of kick you up. But once you kick off at around that 1000 mark, expect to kind of double every month. And as long as your line looks quite linear, like you can see on this one, that is a good idea and it shows a good trend and trajectory. 
how much will you earn? Now this is kind of broken down and it's different between other people, but around that sort of $10 RPM is good. RPM stands for revenue per mile. So every thousand views, that's what the M stands for. So the idea is that if your channel is getting sort of the 10,000 views over a sort of 24 hour period, you're then going to be earning $100. So the idea is that even early on, you might only be earning sort of $10 a day because you're getting 1,000 views a day, but then when that 1,000 becomes two, you're essentially doubling your income. Now, the way that payouts kind of work is that you're usually going to be getting paid once a month from Google on around the 20th of the month after the month that had closed. So they do a calendar month and then sort of uh, 20 days after the calendar month has finished, they're going to do your payout and that's straight into your bank account. How do you get monetized? So to get monetized, you're going to need 4,000 watch hours and you're going to need 1,000 subscribers. If you work really hard, you should be able to get this within between that one to two month period, but three to four months seems appropriate for a channel. So the idea is that you will be going through and grinding quite hard for that first month or two to get that 1,000 subs and also get that 4,000 watch hours. So that's why setting up all those routines and good practices in the beginning help because when you do get monetized, you'll be kicking forward and your channel will be running. Doing paid promos or not. Now this comes down to personal preference, but there is a big heavy divide when it comes down to it. The idea with paid promos is the fact that you will be paid to promote or shill a project on your channel and usually try to cover it as if it's not paid. Now what this means is it means that you can be misleading those uh, viewers that are watching it thinking that it may be a good project. Now everyone has to do their own research on a project, but sometimes people's research are watching videos like you're making. So I'm heavily on the side of don't do paid promos. Only cover projects that you like and only talk about projects in the way that you like. By doing this, you're going to build trust and authenticity with your audience, which is more valuable than $1,000 or $2,000. But one aspect that you could use is reaching to the aspects of the uh, support networks that help the NFT space run. So just say you got a promo from FTX, a promo from Coinbase, you got a promo from some tools that kind of help the NFT space. The idea is that you can be taking promos, but doing promos of aspects or tools or projects that are kind of very speculative when it comes down to NFTs can be dangerous and can put you in a bad situation and tarnish your reputation down the line. Make the content that you want. Now, ultimately, what comes down to making a successful channel is making the content that you want on your terms and doing it the way that you want. This is an NFT channel. I could be doing a post drop analysis right now, but right now I want to make a piece of content which is teaching you how to actually get to this stage to do what I'm doing. Because when it comes down to it, I want to make content that I want. I don't wanna have a boss that's telling me that they don't like this or they do like this. The reason that I make these videos is that if I wanna leave in a spelling error, if you wanna leave in a jump cut, I don't care. I'm gonna make this the way that I wanna make it because I am the boss, I'm the critic, I am the one person that kind of does it all and then sends it out. So the idea that if you make the content that you genuinely care about that you make, you will find an audience that likes you for you and likes the content that you're making. And then from that, you will have an impact on them in a way that is better than just the monetary gains. And if you're focused on helping other people, educating other people, entertaining other people, you will get those monetary aspects that come from having a YouTube channel. So overall, it's a different kind of video today. Hopefully you found value in it. If you did, please consider hitting up that subscribe button and also hit up that like button. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.